This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this very simple logo design using Adobe Illustrator. And if you'd like to learn more about logo design, be sure to check out my Logo Design Academy. It's an 18-part video series where I outline my entire creative process for coming up with logo ideas and executing them. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you'd like to check that out. So to get us started here in Illustrator, we want to start off with a new document sized at 1280 by 1280 pixels. To do that, you can just go to File, New, and then you can choose your settings right there. As you can see, I already have it set 1280 by 1280, and that's in pixels. Go ahead and click Create, and you should end up with something like this. So before we get started, we just want to set up our document so that we're all working with a similar view, as you see here on my setup. So to do that, we'll come over here to where it says View. And make sure you only have snap to point selected. If you have anything else selected here, deselect it and then make sure you have snap to point selected. And over here where it says window, we're going to want control, color, and pathfinder. And that's these menus over here along with this, uh, these tool settings up here. So to get us started, the first thing I'm going to do is create a circle in the middle of the page here. So I'm going to click and hold over this rectangle tool to get the flyout menu. And I'm going to choose the ellipse tool right here. And I'm going to click and drag on the canvas to create an ellipse. And then I'm going to hold shift so that it locks it. It locks the proportions so that it's a perfectly round circle like that. We'll leave that as it is. And I want to center this up on the page. So I'll come over here to the align menu. It should be the align tab should be right next to the pathfinder menu. Just go ahead and click on that. If you don't have an align menu, just go to window and click on align and it should, it should populate there. And where it says align too, I want to choose align to selection. And then I'm just going to center it up on the page horizontally and vertically. And now it should be in the center of the page like that. So as it stands right now, this circle is filled with the color white and it has a black outline. What I want to do is click on the outline right here and then click this red slash to get rid of the black outline. And then I want to select the color, the fill color again, and I want to fill this with a shade of red like that. And I want to bring the opacity of this down roughly in half. So I'll come over here to where it says opacity, bring that down in half like that click out of it to get rid of it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this and then paste it in place. So I'm, I'm going to go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste in place. And with the pasted copy, I want to get rid of the fill color. So I'll click this slash right here so it has no fill color. And then I'll click on the stroke color. And now I want to give this a fill color like that. I want to fill the stroke with the color like that. So let's go ahead and scale this up now. I'm going to click and drag this handle right here. I'm going, to hold, I'm going to hold Shift and Alt once I do that so that it scales it up like that and it locks the proportions. And I want to make this thicker. So I'll come up here to where it says Stroke. I'm going to hover my cursor right over these arrows right here and just roll up the mouse wheel until it makes that circle thicker like that. Now let me make that a little bigger. Again, to scale it out like that, scale it up. Click and drag one of these corner nodes and then hold shift and alt so it locks it in place and locks the proportions as well. That right there is what we're looking for. I'm actually going to make this inner circle a little smaller. But before I do that, I just want to convert this from an outline to a path. So I'll come over here and go to Object, Path, and click on um, Outline Stroke. Now it's outlined. So let me click on the, uh, the selection tool right here. I'm going to click this circle in the middle and I'm just going to resize this. Again, holding Shift and Alt, I just want to make this a little smaller so I have a little more padding in there of that white space between the uh, outline and the body of the design here. So now I'm going to take the body of the design here and turn this into the swirling liquid as depicted in the thumbnail. So to do that, let's come up here to the Direct Selection tool. And I want to click on this top node right here and select just that one and then press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And that's going to cut that path in half. And what I want to do now is close this path back up. So I'll come over here to the pen tool. I'm going to click on this point and then come over here, click on that point. And that right there is what we're looking for. Nothing visibly changed on the screen, but what it did was it closed the path so that we could work with this further. So now I want to click and hold on the pen tool to get the flyout menu. I want to choose the anchor point tool right there. And then I just want to click and drag on this line right here to bring that up like that. And it's going to curve the line. And you could use these handles to adjust the curvature of that line. I'm going to take this handle, make this line come up here like that. Take this handle, make this line come down here like that. So that we have the appearance of like moving liquid. And you can go ahead and adjust this as you like. I think this looks pretty good like that. So I'm going to leave it right there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a background 
well, not really a background. I'm going to make it look like the, the liquid is swirling in a different direction in the back as well. So what I'm going to do is let's grab this select tool. I want to create a duplicate copy of this object right here. To do that, I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and then click and drag and move it off of the canvas like that. And it's going to create a duplicate copy. Now let me move over here a little bit. To move the page around, I'm just pressing down the space bar and clicking and dragging the mouse. I want to take this object and make it a different color so we could differentiate it pretty easily. So I'm going to make this green. Oops, you know what? I have to select. Let me get rid of the stroke. If you have this up here, this is your stroke color. Hit the red slash so there's no stroke. And then come up here to the fill color and make sure you have the fill color active and then you can fill that in. Okay, so I want to flip this horizontally now. So come up here to the rotate tool. Click and hold on that till we get this flyout menu. I want to choose reflect, the reflect tool. So to do that, to reflect this object, I'm going to bring the cursor outside of the object and then just rotate it around like that. And then hold, once you get it to, so that it's opposite, that it's mirrored horizontally, hold shift to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. And now it has rotated or flipped horizontally. And what I want to do now is I want to take this corner of the object and snap it onto this corner right here. So to do that, we'll grab the select tool. Make sure you have this object selected as I do. Hold control, and while holding control, click and drag this corner right here, and then snap it onto this corner like that. That's what we're looking for right there. And now I want to create some negative space right here just to cut off this part of the green object right here. So to do that, let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Select just this red object right here, the original piece we were working with. And let's copy that hit by hitting Control C. We're going to paste it in place. Control C to copy and then Control Shift and V to paste it in place. Now you can do that through the menus here. I just think it's easier to use the keyboard shortcuts. So once we've done that, we want to make this a different color as well. Let's make this blue. And I want to rotate this around. So to do that, I'm going to come back up here to the, to the uh, Reflect tool, click and hold, get the Rotate tool. And I want to rotate this around, but I want to change the rotation center. This little point right here represents the rotation center. I'm going to put the rotation center up in the corner like that. And then I'm just going to click and drag to rotate this around like that. Maybe about that much. And what I'm looking at is the intersecting area right here between the green object and the blue object. This little area is going to be used to create negative space between that green object and the original red, op the, the original red object. So let me grab the select tool. Let me zoom in on this corner right here. I'm going to hold alt and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in. And I just want to take this object and just position this right up here so that it's sticking out a little bit into the green area. We want this. We don't want this flush up against the corner right there. We want this overlapping it a little bit like that. So let me zoom back out. With that blue object selected, hold shift, click on the green object, and then come back over here to the Pathfinder menu. Again, if you don't have a Pathfinder tab, just go to Windows and click on Pathfinder. And I want to select right here where it says minus front. And it's going to subtract that from the front. And now what we want to do is ungroup that. So to ungroup it, I'm going to go to Control, Shift, and G. And that's going to ungroup those two objects. And then I want to deselect this object. So I'm going to hold Shift and click on this object right here to deselect it. And that all that's going to be left selected is this bottom green object, which we don't need. So you could press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And what we could do now is let's click and drag over everything. Let's bring the opacity of it all the way up. And let's make this one solid fill color like that. Go with red like that. Let me click off it to deselect everything. Let me select just this ring right here. And I want to make this blue. You can use whatever colors you'd like. I'm just following along with what I did for the, for the uh, thumbnail design. Let me zoom back in. And then finally, I want to put some little circles down here to represent bubbles for the uh, liquid. So let me come back over here to the circles and ellipses tool. Click and drag to create a circle. Hold shift so that it locks it into a perfect circle like that. I'm just going to make this white. Let's create another one down here, slightly smaller, and then another one over here, even smaller than that. Again, holding shift to lock the proportions. And then you can grab the select tool and reposition these as you need. Just like that. So there you have the logo design. Now, if you want to make it so that, let me show you, right? If I take this design and move it off of the page, you'll notice that this, that these yellow, I mean, these white circles are part of the design here. They don't go through to the negative space. So if you want to do that, if you want to make those circles negative space, what you could do is you could select it, hold shift, select the red object behind it, and then come over here to where it says minus front. 
and that's going to punch a hole through it, even though nothing visibly changed. I'll show you in a second. Let me do the same thing over here. Let me click on that, hold shift, click on the red liquid minus front and do the same thing again. Select that, hold shift, select the red object minus front and there you go. So let me take this, move it off the page and you can see what I mean now. That is now negative space. You can take this and use this you can like embroider this onto a cap or something because it's, it's, it's functional as a logo like that. So that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating that very simple logo design using Adobe Illustrator. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.